It's been over a month since Anthem's launch, and the question that still lingers on players' mind is what the hell happened? What the hell went wrong? Answering the question is none other than Jason Schreier, who has published a number of investigative reports in the past on troubled projects like Mass Effect Andromeda and both Destiny games. His latest investigative report concerns Anthem, and it began by relaying how the name Anthem was picked one week before the game's E3 2017 announcement and showcase. Originally, the game was supposed to be called Beyond, but because the trademark was too difficult to secure, they switched to the backup name Anthem at the last minute. Here's the thing though, the word Anthem didn't mean anything at the time. It was only after they picked the name that they came up with a narrative concept of the Anthem of Creation and the Cataclysms. The article starts with this fun fact to highlight how this sort of occurrence is representative of the entirety of Anthem's seven-year-long troubled development cycle. Similarly to Andromeda, the game didn't enter full production until the last 18 months due to the project being stuck in pre-production and the team suffering quote, big narrative reboots, major design overhauls, and a leadership team said to be unable to provide a consistent vision and unwilling to listen to feedback. Now, the article was keen on debunking a couple things. Anthem wasn't originally a single-player title, EA didn't force Bioware to make their own version of Destiny, and content wasn't stripped to later be sold as additional content. At the same time, many of the mishaps surrounding Anthem were attributed to Bioware higher-ups. Sure, there were technical issues surrounding the Frostbite engine that's constantly made Bioware developers' life difficult, but beyond that were factors like indecision and mismanagement, Departments being understaffed, in-office politics, and more, all of which led to a work environment where anxiety and depression were commonplace. Doctors apparently mandated week- or month-long stress leaves. Staff members could be found locking themselves in private rooms and crying, and as one source put it, quote, people were so angry and sad all the time. Depression and anxiety are an epidemic within Bioware. Another source relates similar sentiments, stating the following, I actually cannot count the amount of stress casualties we had on Mass Effect Andromeda or Anthem. A stress casualty at Bioware means someone had such a mental breakdown from the stress, they're just gone for one to three months. Some come back, some don't. The article then proceeded to highlight similar technical and managerial challenges that plagued Dragon Age Inquisition, a game that was built in its final year, and how some Bioware staff partially resent that game's success because it meant the studio couldn't course correct its brutal and disorganized development process that they've become complacent to. It's part of what Bioware higher-ups like to call Bioware magic, this notion that everything will turn out okay even when the going gets tough, that everything will come together in the final stretch with enough hard work and crunch, even when a project seems to be falling apart, a notion that's unsustainable judging by the disastrous launches of both Mass Effect Andromeda and Anthem, with previous Bioware games having come close to crumbling as well. The article then shifted gears to talk about the early days of Anthem, or Project Dylan as it was known back then, a reference to Bob Dylan and Casey Hudson's hope that this would be a game players would talk about for years to come. Anthem was a very secretive project starting out, with ideas constantly shifting, the team being kept small, and with employees needing a password to access the wiki, though this was still during a time when the focus was finishing Dragon Age Inquisition on time. One concept that the team became attached to was this idea of a dangerous, hazardous planet where you'd need a robot suit to survive. This planet was described as the Bermuda Triangle of the universe, where weird shit kept happening and ships kept crashing into due to some strange gravitational pull. Early concepts also pegged the game as one where the player would be at the bottom of the food chain akin to Dark Souls, Darkest Dungeon, and Shadow of Colossus, with the goal being to see how long players could survive dangerous creatures while seeing what's out there. The article also quoted a developer who talked about how the initial goal was for Bioware to be able to push levers that could activate events, hazards, weather shifts, so on and so forth on a whim, with players being able to see these changes happen live. You may recall that this dynamic feature was briefly shown off during Bioware's E3 2014 video, though it never made it to the final game. One 
aspect that did remain a constant was the online nature of Anthem, though it didn't start out as a looter shooter. It used to be more about exploring the world and seeing how long you could survive and fend off creatures while investigating anomalies before returning to safety, maybe scavenging materials to upgrade your weapons and suits along the way. It wasn't clear whether Frostbite could actually handle such a concept in a large-scale online environment, but the idea excited many developers at the studio. Then, in August 2014, Project Dylan suffered a setback when they lost their leader, Casey Hudson, who left the studio for a few years. However, right around the same time, Dragon Age Inquisition launched to critical acclaim, so morale was high when much of the team moved to Anthem, with everyone excited about the potential that existing early prototypes offered. But once Anthem entered production, much like with Andromeda, ambitious concepts soon began falling apart due to technical limitations or lack of synergy with game design. Vertical mobility throughout a vast, seamless open world was a big issue, with ideas like climbing up mountains never panning out. Mechanics like flight proved troublesome, which were added and removed multiple times throughout Anthem's development, and each change to mobility features meant that the world design had to be accommodated. Procedural encounters and hazards were also considered at one point, but ultimately scrapped when early prototypes proved they weren't all that fun. Story went through multiple iterations as well, with Dragon Age writer David Gator initially helming Anthem's narrative, though there was internal pushback against his story being different from initial Anthem concepts, while at the same time being very traditional and similar to past Bioware titles, with descriptors like sci-fi Dragon Age being thrown around a lot. When reached out by Jason for comment, Gator expressed frustration towards how Bioware kept insisting that the story has to be something different, something the studio has never done before, without really being clear on what that was, and while he himself was fine with a mandate from design director Preston Watamaniuk that Anthem had to be science fantasy rather than pure sci-fi, others were less enthusiastic about that direction. Gator eventually left the studio in early 2016, stating, quote, As time passed, I didn't feel keen to play the game that I was working on. This led to further setbacks, with one developer describing it as follows. As you can imagine, writing for Bioware sets the foundation for all the games. When writing is unsure of what it's doing, it causes a lot of destruction to a lot of departments. At this point, in light of Casey Hudson's departure, Anthem was led by a team of leaders comprised of game director John Warner, design director Preston Watamaniuk, art director Derek Watts, animation director Parrish Lay, and a few other veterans who had been with the project from the beginning. However, a common complaint among employees was that this leadership team lacked vision, that they could never settle on anything, that they could never pull the team together towards a common goal, that they were unable to be clear and concise about what it was they were making, constantly adding or changing things up midway, or constantly wanting more. Meetings, for example, would often result in arguments that led to no real resolution, with nobody stepping up to make a final verdict on how to proceed, so some things took a year or two to figure out. Instead of one leader steering the ship, it was a bunch of leaders who seldom agreed on anything, holding back the entire voyage. So throughout 2015 and 2016, the project had nothing cohesive going for it from a narrative, world-building, design, and gameplay standpoint, and concepts like multiple cities for players to explore was scaled down a couple times until we just got the one fort. In parallel to all this, Andromeda development was in dire straits, and the Frostbite engine was causing troubles and delays across both projects while making certain ideas difficult to implement. As one developer explained it, quote, There were a lot of plans where by the time they were implemented, it was a year later and the game had evolved. We all know about Frostbite Engine by now. It was initially designed for first-person shooters like Battlefield, and EA wanted all studios under the company's umbrella to employ it. But because the engine wasn't designed for the types of games studios like BioWare made, a lot of features had to be built from scratch. One source described Frostbite as follows. Frostbite is like an in-house engine with all the problems that entails. It's poorly documented, hacked together, and so on, with all the problems of an externally sourced engine. Nobody you actually work with designed it, so you don't know why this thing works the way it does, why this is named the way it is. 
As if developing Andromeda on Frostbite wasn't precarious enough, Anthem proved to be especially challenging due to the fact that BioWare Edmonton had never made an online action game before. The setbacks brought about by Frostbite eventually led to BioWare cutting back on things like environmental features and the survival concept of the game. They just couldn't get the stuff working because the engine wasn't made for it, and it would have taken forever to repurpose Frostbite for their intentions. Frostbite also made debugging very difficult with minor bugs that would normally take a few minutes to sort out, taking days, and one source noted that unlike other engines they have worked with, doing something very basic can take many steps with Frostbite. Further compounding Frostbite's inefficiencies was how Anthem's development team was constantly understaffed, an issue that Andromeda faced as well. At one point, EA wanted FIFA to be made with Frostbite in 2016, so the publisher pulled Frostbite programmers from BioWare so they could work on FIFA, a prioritization that's hardly surprising given the FIFA franchise is EA's true flagship and their biggest moneymaker. There was also mention of how it's common for EA Studios to be fighting over resources like the Frostbite team's time, and because Bioware games don't make EA as much money as games of other studios, they were given less help on that front. There seems to be a systematic problem within EA when it comes to Frostbite. They want all their studios to use it, but not only is the engine a pain in the ass to work with, EA doesn't have the manpower to help all these studios who are struggling with it, so certain studios get preferential treatment over others and those who get the short end of the stick suffer. Eventually, 2016 came to an end. Four years had passed since development began, and yet Anthem was still in pre-production. At this point, developers began to get the sense that Anthem was in big trouble, despite higher-ups' insistence that things would all work out in the end due to the so-called Bioware magic. When developers brought up concerns about Anthem's development state and the similarities to Andromeda and Inquisition struggles, the feedback was largely dismissed by the leadership team. Also, by this time, Anthem began to resemble a shooter-looter like Destiny, forgoing the initial survival concept, but it was apparently frowned upon by leadership for developers to make direct comparisons to Destiny, even if such comparisons were unavoidable given Anthem was shaping up to share much of the same DNA, which made it difficult for developers to get a feel for what games like Destiny got right. This probably explains why Anthem failed so miserably on the looter aspect of its looter-shooter system. Systems. Bioware higher-ups, whether out of ego or something else entirely, didn't want the game taking cues from established genre leaders when that was exactly what the game needed, especially with a team that had only made RPGs and never made a looter shooter before. The article then moved on to 2017. Throughout this year, Andromeda launched in late March and not long after, Bioware Montreal was closed down, which meant more manpower for Anthem. At around that time, then-EA executive Patrick Soderlund played a demo of Anthem that was built back in December 2016, one that didn't feature flight mechanics, and he was apparently thoroughly displeased, telling Bioware this wasn't the game he had been promised. Another six weeks would go by, and after significant crunch, another demo was built specifically for Patrick Soderlund, one that reintroduced flight mechanics and featured better graphics, aided by staff members from DICE who helped the Bioware team work their way around Frostbite. Implementing flight proved to be a major issue from both a technical and design standpoint, but to impress Soderlund, it was added back in, and Soderlund was much more impressed by this demo, and in turn it would end up serving as the basis for the gameplay that was shown at E3 2017. Here's the crazy bit though, even throughout E3 2017, Anthem was still in pre-production, which is why the final game turned out to be so different and so downgraded compared to this footage. The E3 2017 presentation was also when ground floor Bioware developers got to see what sort of game they were actually working towards. Prior to that showcase, the staff didn't really know the direction the game was headed in. That's how lacking the game's vision and direction was. That's how horrible communication was. Even after E3 2017, because so much of the gameplay was fake and scripted, developers didn't know if some of the things they saw would or could be implemented by Fall 2018, the release window announced at E3, especially when almost nothing had actually been implemented in playable format at that time. 
The article then shifted to discussing some of the in-office politics and drama at the studio, with Bioware's mentality of being the A-team generating tensions among various divisions. A lot of frustration also stemmed from Bioware Edmonton's lack of vision and clarity once Bioware Austin became heavily involved, with Austin seldom understanding what the game concept was and what they were working towards. Making matters worse was that when Austin tried to offer feedback or make creative contributions, there were largely dismissed by Edmonton, despite Austin being more knowledgeable about online games. After all, they developed the MMO Star Wars The Old Republic. One source had this to say on this issue. We tell them this is not going to work. Look, these story things you're doing, it's gonna split up the player experience. We'd already been through all of it with The Old Republic. We knew what it was like when players felt like they were getting rushed through story missions because other players were on their headsets going, come on, come on, let's go. So we knew all these things and we'd bring it up repeatedly and we were ignored. The overall perception was that Edmonton saw Austin as the lesser team and treated them as such, which led to valuable input being dismissed and internal animosity boiling. The hope was that things would get better after the E3 2017 gameplay showcase that seemed to hone in a vision for Anthem, but Edmonton's indecision would persist as major systems kept getting scratched and implementation of core systems and features kept getting delayed. As a result, the game apparently remained in pre-production throughout June, July, and August 2017, making a fall 2018 release window unrealistic, and EA would not delay the game beyond March 2019. It wasn't until October 2017 that some major changes took place. General Manager Aaron Flynn left Bioware and was replaced by Casey Hudson. Dragon Age 4 was cancelled and rebooted with a small team, while everyone else was moved to Anthem's development, and Mark Dara became Anthem's executive producer. It was Mark Dara who pulled the team together and finally started making definitive decisions for Anthem. Mechanics like shooting and flying eventually started to come together, though level design, story, and world building suffered and kept being stalled, changed, or rebuilt. One developer noted that by the beginning of 2018, only one mission had been implemented into the game, and he also said this, They talk a lot about the six-year development time, but really the core gameplay loop, the story, and all the missions in the game were made in the last 12 to 16 months because of that lack of vision and total lack of leadership across the board. The article then described 2018 as one of BioWare's most stressful years with pressure coming from all fronts. EA had mandates and expectations, like a push for all their games to have long-term monetization. Competition in the looter-shooter genre only intensified. The Battlefront 2 loot box controversy caused a publisher-wide reboot of monetization systems. Studios like Visceral Games were shut down on a whim mid-project, and more. At this point, with Mark Dara leading the charge and manpower from the Dragon Age 4 team at their disposal, it became a race to the finish for Bioware Edmonton, and one major compromise that resulted from this rush was Anthem's infamous loading screens, which Bioware knew would piss off a lot of players, but they simply could not address it by the mandated release date. The article also pointed out various promised features that never made it into the final game, with one example being Game Informer's cover story and how there were details of players gaining skills for their pilot that would apply to all javelins, skills like increasing how long javelins can fly for before overheating, but this skill system was cut before launch. Overall, sources expressed Anthem was cobbled together at the last minute, and while this isn't unusual for game development to an extent, Anthem was a special case in that so much had gone wrong. The article then focused on the topic of facial animations for Anthem, which higher-ups mandated had to look good after what happened with Andromeda, hence the use of performance capture. However, performance capture came at a cost. It proved to be rather expensive, so Bioware only had one shot to get the recordings they wanted with little to no room for retakes, leading to situations in which story missions were altered after performance capture had been recorded thereby resulting in numerous dialogue inconsistencies that can be spotted throughout the final game. The example this article provided was a cutscene in the campaign where Commander Vule talks about how he located Sentinel Dax by following the smoke of her destroyed javelin, except her javelin never got destroyed at any point in that mission. Commander, how'd you find us? I followed the smoke. 
Pass by what was left of your javelin. Plenty of other examples can be found if you scour forums, many of them involving characters talking about someone in the room as if they weren't there. Across the board, things had to move very quickly in the final stretches of Anthem's development if Bioware intended to release the game on time, and this meant developers couldn't really take a step back and look at the full scope of the game and adjust accordingly. This is why they couldn't balance loot drop rates properly, or get a feel for how grindy or repetitive aspects of the game felt. Basically, enough of the game never came together on time for them to extensively test all of these elements out before launch. There was also mention of how Anthem was plagued with so many server issues at one point that developers couldn't log in to test out bugs for a whole week. At another point, developers were tasked to test levels encouraging four-player co-op in an offline environment, and certain features like the launch bay, where players can show off their javelins to other players, were last-minute additions, and it shows. The article then returned to the topic of developers having to take stress leaves to mitigate mental health issues, and how developers were leaving the studio in droves throughout 2017 and 2018, from big names like Drew Kirpashin to lesser-known but valuable veteran talent like art and animation director Neil Thompson, technical director Jax Lebrun, lead designer Chris Schoenberg, and more. Furthermore, when Aaron Flynn left Bioware, a dozen others followed him to his new tech company, Improbable. The article also extrapolated on the notorious Tombs of Legionnaires mission, which sources confirmed was intended to pad out the campaign. The mission apparently proved to be controversial even within Bioware during development, and yet they decided to implement it anyway. And it was worse before. At one point, the mission included time gates to further draw out the length of the campaign, though this was thankfully removed eventually, though the final version of the mission still turned out to be crap and insufferable. The article then proceeded to detail the inevitable February 2019 launch of Anthem. While developers would have liked a few more months of development, time they couldn't have, they felt optimistic about Anthem being a live service that could get better over time, and they felt good enough about what they had that they expected the game would see an average Metacritic score of somewhere in the high 70s. We know now, of course, that the game launched in an unacceptably compromised state and that the meta score is currently sitting at 59% from 72 critics. Apparently, part of this had to do with Bioware making the mistake of accidentally releasing a build that was a few weeks old when they launched the game on February 15th, 2019. The article claims that this mistake led to far more negative reviews than Anthem might have received otherwise, but I would argue that patches that released shortly after launch didn't really do nearly enough to address the game's core issues. I would wager reviews and meta score would have been pretty similar even if Bioware had launched the right version. Maybe a point or two higher at best, but certainly not the high 70s Bioware was hoping for. After the game's launch, once player feedback started pouring in, sources relay that many players' big picture complaints had been brought up to Bioware's leadership during development, stuff that was brushed off. Examples include story conversations mid-mission being hard to listen to when players are talking during gameplay or when they're rushing towards the next objective, the overheating mechanic preventing players from enjoying flight for too long, and Fortars' dialogue choices being inconsequential. I gather some of this stuff might be able to be addressed with future updates, but other issues are rooted so deeply into the core of Anthem that I cannot help but doubt they'll ever be rectified to player satisfaction and content. Whatever the future holds, it's now up to Bioware Austin, which has taken over the game as originally planned, while Edmonton has moved on to Dragon Age 4. Speaking of which, Dragon Age 4 will apparently be built on Anthem's codebase to prevent having to start from scratch, with the hope being that technical issues will be less prevalent throughout development. But given how rocky Anthem's codebase is, I'm not sure that's a point of confidence. And as far as Anthem goes, some folks over at Bioware are optimistic that the game will be much better months down the line, while other expressed Anthem's rocky launch might be the reality check Bioware leadership needs to make them realize their current production practices have to change. 
And that about concludes all the key information relayed by Jason Schreier's article. As usual, very thorough, very insightful, and definitely much needed information to help clarify why Anthem launched the way it did, and what sort of decisions and practices can cause a game development cycle to go so awry. A lot of it feels like deja vu if you ask me. A large chunk of this feels like I'm reading the Mass Effect Andromeda investigative report all over again, though I guess there is a lot of crossover involved between Andromeda Andromeda and Anthem's development, given they were created in parallel. Regardless, bottom line is that the blame for Anthem's issues seems to largely sit on BioWare's leadership team. Compounded by the inefficiencies of the Frostbite engine, EA's lackluster support for studios struggling with the engine, and the publisher's inflexibility when it comes to delaying games that are clearly not ready for launch. Had EA given BioWare one more year under Mark Dara's leadership, maybe Anthem would have launched in an adequate state. But that doesn't change the fact that most of the six to seven years of Anthem's development was thoroughly wasted due to incompetent management, indecisive leadership, and the absence of a clear and cohesive vision. I'll remind you that when they showed off the first gameplay demo of the game, Anthem was still in pre-production, that is insane. This stuff is all on Bioware's higher-ups, and unless something about the studio's decision-making process changes, I cannot foresee the studio's future development cycles being any less troubled, or the studio's work environment being able to retain veteran talent for much longer. Now, Bioware did issue a rather piss-poor response to Jason's article via a blog post where they admonished the article, but I don't want to get into this right now. I'll be discussing this topic in a future video. For now, this is everything you need to know about Anthem's troubled development history. Information I'd argue disgruntled customers and disillusioned fans of Anthem deserve to know, all courtesy of another top-notch investigation by Jason Schreier. Let us know in the comments below what your take is on all this new information that has come to light in regards to Anthem's development. With that, I would like to end this news update and discussion video. Thank you for tuning in. To be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.